Good morning. Sadly, we are about to leave our Airbnb in Hong Kong, but that means that we are going to be traveling to our next country today. So we're about to head to the airport, but our flight doesn't leave for another eight hours or so. The reason that we're going so early is because other than spending money on transportation to the airport, we don't want to spend any money today. And because we have lounge access through our credit cards, it means that we can eat all of our meals for free in the lounges at the airport today. It turns out that Hong Kong has a plethora of different lounges available. Each of those usually comes with some kind of restriction. And so with that, in order to keep to maximum stays of three hours and things like that, especially since our flight's not for quite some time yet, the intention is to do a spot of lounge hopping, which therefore gives this travel day a bit of a twist. Yeah, it's gonna be, you know, the same, same, but different, different too. So let's crack on. Plaza Premium Lounge in Hong Kong Terminal 1, enjoying some coffee. Cheers, folks. Cheers. And we had a little difficulty getting into a lounge this morning. Not least because it was a little bit difficult to even find a lounge in the first place. My suggestion, based on our experience of finding the lounge, is to find yourself one of those electronic directories where you can input where you want to go and then it shows you the walking directions because I'd say we spent about 20-25 minutes following the signs for where the lounges were and we kind of just went in circles. The airport is well signposted but yet the signs are still confusing somehow. Yeah, I think it's just because it's such a large terminal building and there are so many parts to it that it can be a little bit difficult to know kind of which way is up even with the signs. As we had told you, we planned to hit up like three different lounges and give them all rating systems. So we thought, let's go to the Chase Sapphire Lounge. We'll have three hours in there. No, no, no. This is not how it works. No. It's three hours before your departure time. But that is not specified on the Priority Pass website. It just says they have a three hour maximum. Whereas if you look on the Centurion website, then they do specify three hours prior to your departure. So basically we got turned away from the Chase Sapphire Lounge because we were there definitely more than three hours prior to our departure. Even though all we wanted to do was stay for three hours. Exactly. However, fortunately, there is an abundance of lounges. So we ended up coming to one of multiple Plaza Premium Lounges. So this one is just above gate 60, I wanna say. And this one seems to be pretty nice. Yeah, we've now settled in. Mm -hmm. Had some time to try the food out, get a feel for the lounge, and I think we're ready to do a rating. Starting off with our rating for food, the food was all very good quality. It was tasty. They had a decent selection of hot food that was kind of a mixture of local and Western food. We arrived at about lunchtime, so we saw more of their lunch menu. I assume they would have different things at breakfast, but I could be wrong. Even so, they still had out some of their breakfast selection of cereal and bread that you could toast. 
They also have a salad bar here. The only downside to this lounge is there was no fruit available and there really wasn't much dessert to speak of. They had a jar of butter cookies, but that's it. So with that, we're giving it a seven out of 10. On the drinks front, then it's a pretty good selection. So alongside coffees that you saw us just enjoying, there's also freshly squeezed orange juice, their own detox water, and then a multitude of teas, a soda fountain as well as a water fountain to be able to refill your bottles or glasses. So as far as non-alcoholic options go, then it's pretty comprehensive. On the booze front, you have two beer options, so you have the choice of either Carlsberg or Skoll. Wine-wise, we saw red wine, but no white. I think I may have seen some white in the fridge, so it's just one option for each color. Yep, and then by way of top shelf alcohol, then it's kind of standard, like there's nothing kind of really popping off the shelf, so to speak. So with that then, you know, it's a very, decent selection, if not spectacular, so we're going to give this one a 7. I think the thing I like to see with drinks is when you can take it away. So mm -hmm. I like juice or pop or water in a can or bottle. So that usually puts a lounge over the top for me in terms of drinks. Mm -hmm. But at this point, because we've been to so many, yes, we're very lucky, we are having to start to really nitpick. Yes. So if it sounds like we're being harsh, it's just we're really having to get into the nitty gritty here. Yep, got to separate them some because there are a lot of these that are very similar. Yeah. As for cleanliness, this lounge is very clean. Everything in here actually appears quite new. The furniture is in good shape and when I went to the washroom, they even had a hand lotion. And yeah, the washrooms appeared renovated and clean, so with that, an 8 out of 10. On the comfort front, then this is a relatively small lounge by way of floor space, but they do manage to make up with it by really making a good use of the space and give you a multitude of different seating options. So you do have everything from bar stools to couches and everything in between. And each of those does seem to be pretty nice, well cushions. And overall, you can make your own little private cooking wherever you wish. So with that, we're giving that an eight. And lastly, we have amenities. And just like all the other standard lounges, it has Wi-Fi, it has charging ports, and it has a shower room. So we give it every other lounge with those facilities the same grade. So it's a seven out of 10. And that gives this lounge a grand total of 37. So again, this put it into our mid-range lounges, but definitely towards the nicer end. And yeah, I think that's the fairest way we can put it. All in all, it's pretty harmless. It's still also pretty good in terms of what we need. It's good, but not spectacular, I would say. I am very excited about the lounge we're gonna pop to next. They won't let us in until three hours before departure time, which we know about because it's on the website. We've never hit up this type of lounge before, and I feel like since we're at an airport that has this type of lounge, we ought to go.
one of the unique features about this lounge, and certainly we've never experienced this yet, is that they have an inclusive cocktails menu, which is specially curated for the purposes of Amex Lounge. So this one is called a rickshaw. It comes with vodka, ginger liqueur, midori, which is a melon liqueur, and lemon juice. And I've had a sip already. I'm gonna have another one. It is strong, it is sweet, but it's beautiful. And since we are on our second lounge, it is time for our second lounge rating of the day from the same airport. This is a rare one. This one is the Centurion Lounge in Hong Kong. Food-wise, this was probably the most comprehensive menu that we've ever seen. They really thought of everything from hors d'oeuvres to a little cheese board to dim sum to samosas and spring rolls to a different fish option, chicken, meat, everything from western to eastern, including some Indian cuisine in there as well. And then on top of that, they had build your own nachos if you fancy that instead. Or alternatively, if you were more of a sweet person, then you could just spend some on jelly beans. They had fresh honeycomb. Never seen that in anywhere. And also fresh fruits on top of brownies, cheesecake options, anything that you could possibly shake a stick at by way of this menu, they had it. It was just fantastic. So with that, we're giving this a nine. In terms of drinks, this lounge is second to none. They have fresh apple juice and orange juice. They have water. They also have juice and pop and water to go. They have fountain machines. They have self-serve coffee. But one thing that you rarely ever see in a lounge is you can get a flat white, a cappuccino, a latte made with oat and soy milk, which I appreciate so much. On top of that, they have a ton of wine options. They have beer on tap and in cans and bottles. And they have a selection of cocktails that you can have made. So this is the first we're going to give out of all the lounges that we've been to. The drinks get a 10 out of 10. On the cleanliness front, honestly, you can't really fault it. The beat at which they're cleaning up the tables is always really good. There's a few spots here and there whereby they haven't necessarily wiped down everything, which is why we're marking this down a little bit, but fundamentally, it's just as good as any other lounge. So with that, we're giving this one a nine. In terms of comfort, this is the one place that this lounge falls a little bit short. It has a very small footprint, and the seating options are not extensive. It's mostly two-seater tables with chairs. There are no plush chairs. They're all kind of like a metal back with a thin cushion. There's no couches. So for that reason, this is getting marked a 7 out of 10. On the amenities front, they have done as well as they can to provide you with everything you need. It's very business focused in the sense that you have work rooms, meeting rooms, phone rooms if you need that for whatever reason. And then on top of that they have a couple of additional services like they have a desk where you can check on the status of your flight. While they have plug sockets in the walls, if you need an adapter you can also ask for that at the front desk as well. So that's just a nice little mod con. However, in terms of the additional amenities beyond all of your so-called basics, then there's not a massive amount. I assume that's down to the limited floor plan, but it's not like there seems to be any kind of spa treatments or anything that really kind of goes above and beyond in the same way as other lounges that we've visited up to now. So with that, while it is definitely giving itself a good account, then we are giving this an eight. With all that said, the grand total is 43 out of 50, which puts this lounge in the top tier of lounges. I believe it is only surpassed by the lounge in Oman, and it's getting the same rating as the ones in Jordan and Istanbul.
yet we are in the Philippines we've arrived in Manila but we're actually not staying here long we maybe have 12 or so hours so we've just booked ourselves into an airport hotel because we are going off to the islands right away so in terms of what's happening this evening there's really not much else to tell so we will pick this back up in the morning Coffee we could find. The size of my face. And two chocolate croissant because they were the cheapest thing that you could get. Not expecting anything great from this, but it'll do. Just like that, we have arrived in Karon, which is one of several different islands that we are planning on visiting while we're in the Philippines. I like how you say just like that. It was so easy to get here. Absolutely. You know, like snap a finger and bam, one place to another. So simple. <laughs> but I think that's about it for today. We're just going to settle in catch up on some editing and otherwise just relax. My cough is lingering and my throat is still a little bit sore so just want to kick this once and for all. Exactly and rest is the way forward. So we'll catch up with you all tomorrow. Until next time though, take care. Thank you, Smiley. We have done this since we were No. Yeah, we have. Really? That was technically a centurion match. Oh. We were very disappointed by that. It was a centurion match, that's why. <laughs> Other than that, she's perfectly healthy. Mm.